And finally, part two of my 2003 Dodge Ram 1500 build. Welcome back to Enhancing Your Vehicle Ownership. I'm Nate, and this is my YouTube channel where you get to join me on all of my crazy adventures of automotive ownership. Today, I finally get to bring to you guys part two of my Dodge Ram 1500 build and experience, and it's been a while since I've had an upload on this pickup. And uh, honestly, I've had it running now for about two and a half weeks and in today's video we're going to discuss how I got this truck running and we're going to take a more in-depth tour as well as do a little bit of cosmetic work on this truck and then I'll explain what we've been using this truck for and my purpose in buying it. With that said also check out my Instagram page at uivo underscore auto for additional content on this build as well as anything automotive related going on in my life. There on IGTV, I'm reliving my 1999 Audi A8 Quattro build, and this week I should have the first video uh, come out on Instagram that I had ever filmed of my 99 Audi A8 Quattro, and uh, one of the first videos that really got my YouTube channel started or kicked off, and it's funny I say that because that video never was or never did make it onto YouTube, so if you want to see some new content, check out my Instagram page. All right, so you guys know the story behind my 2003 Dodge Ram 1500 if you watched part one. Uh, I'm just gonna recap that real quick here in part two. So I bought this truck in non-running condition. It didn't run at all from a guy in Cody for about $800. And uh, like I said, it did not run at all. I didn't know anything about it. And he did not know why it did not run. He said he went to go put it in drive or reverse, put it in gear one day, and uh, and it died, and he couldn't get it to start back up. You would turn the key, and nothing would happen. He said that the battery was good, and that before it died, the truck was running a little rough. Um, with that in mind, I saw the truck for the first time when I went to check it out at night, um, and then the second time I saw it was when we went to pick it up on a trailer, also at night. So. If you want to see my first impressions of this vehicle you have to go back and watch part one and I uh, talk a little bit about picking it up in that video as well. Today in part two I'm going to talk about how we got this truck running and uh, I'm going to give you guys a more in-depth tour. When I'm dealing with a vehicle that I know nothing about the first thing I like to do is check the oil and check the coolant to see you know its level of maintenance, how well the owner is on top of maintenance or in the situation where it's a no crank, no start, it could be an indicator to tell me maybe of a larger problem or something more that is going on with inside the motor. For example, if I were to pull a dipstick and the oil was real milky and happened to have water or coolant inside of it, then I know to stay away from that vehicle. So I pulled the dipstick, but nothing was on it at all. And I could also see from the coolant reservoir that there was very little coolant in the system. In fact, the reservoir is completely dry. Both not very good indicators for um, for after the fact of me buying this truck. The previous owner claimed that he had done some engine work to the internals of this engine. He said that he put in built cams and headers. That uh, greatly increases the performance of your engine. However, it also decreases your gas mileage and it can decrease the life of your engine by causing wear and tear, especially if you don't have a shop do it or a professional technician or if you just kind of do that work yourself. So when I saw that there was no oil in the engine and no coolant in the uh, reservoir, things were not looking good for this truck. However, I wanted to see what the no crank, no start situation was really all about because typically in these vehicles or in a vehicle when it is not starting and not cranking, it can be one of three issues. Either your starter is bad, your starter solenoid is bad, or your starter and your solenoid are not getting power. Luckily, because this truck's so tall, it is super easy to crawl under. Getting under here for the first time, I brought along my remote starter which is pretty much a button with two wires on it or a jumper where you can put one wire on the hot side of the starter and one wire on the hot side of the solenoid that gets power when you try to crank over your vehicle. 
I was hoping that this would help me determine if it was a stuck starter solenoid or a bad solenoid or even if there was power down to the starter. Here is the starter on the 5.7 Hemi and um, it's, uh, it's bolted on by two bolts and a couple of wires. Dodge actually has its own type of connector onto the starter so I was looking under here to try to connect my remote starter to something and I noticed that the connection behind the starter right up here was loose and was not plugged in. I couldn't figure out why this connector would be unplugged but I decided you know what that might be our culprit. So I plugged it in and I had my dad test crank the vehicle and it cranked over. Having the vehicle crank over was a huge success but I didn't think that this could actually be the issue because the owner said that he had done some work and had tried to get this vehicle running. So I crawled out from underneath having plugged in that connection. I topped off the oil and the coolant and we tried again. What? Just like that the truck was running once again and so I decided to take it out for its first test drive. I cracked myself up the entire time on this test drive. The truck ran perfectly. Yes, it was a little bit rough. The big tires made the ride wonky and uh, quite entertaining. This passenger window would not roll down and uh, the radio worked, but the truck was so loud with its chopped exhaust that I could not hear it. But for $800 and a five minute fix, this truck was perfect for everything that I had hoped to use it for. With that said, I'm gonna give you guys an in-depth tour of my Dodge Ram 1500 now that it is running. And uh, then I'm gonna tell you guys why I bought this truck and, uh, and what I'm hoping to do with it. And honestly, it's a miracle that this runs. I'm, I'm still blown away by by the fact that this uh, that this truck runs and drives. And I've put uh, almost two tanks of gas in it now, and almost 200 miles on it. So, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into your more in-depth tour. So, in part one of this video, I gave you guys a very brief and quick tour of this truck. But this is the. Dodge Ram 57 Hemi that makes it come to life. Now the previous owner put a cold air intake on it. It is K&N. It's a very nice one. I'm not a huge fan of cold air intakes, but uh, you know the truck seems to run pretty good. You notice that there's oil all over here spilled. I don't know if that's because this oil cap leaks or if it's because the previous owner had to constantly dump oil into this motor. It seems to burn a quart just about every 40 or 50 miles. Um, the truck smokes like crazy and uh, it's also leaking coolant from down here on the bottom of the radiator. And because of that, I don't think that this particular motor is in the best of shape. I think that it's been driven really, really hard. It's not the cleanest, but uh, you know, it does put out pretty decent power for its current state and it is pretty fun to drive around. You can see that there are a lot of paint imperfections on the body. That's a Dodge thing and it comes from uh, mistreatment and not being, you know, super well maintained during its life. But uh, I think that the audience that I'm going to try to appeal to to sell it will like this more coarse and rough look of a truck. And for the purposes that I bought it for, it works perfect and it uh, it's exactly what I need. Now, the previous owner put in these really nice, clear halo headlights and LED blinkers, all that. He put in some nice halo fog lights to match. I, uh, I'm absolutely a fan of halos. I love them. And uh, they honestly look really, really good on a Dodge Ram. There were flames on the paint at one time. Somebody took them off or uh, maybe they're just so faded they're gone. He also had flames on the back tail light and a whole bunch of vinyl that we've removed. And I'm going to show you guys that here in a clip in a second. The, uh, the truck is rough around the edges, but it does have a bed cover. It does have pretty nice lights in the back with LED reverse lights that actually make a huge difference. And now I want to get them for the F-150 because they're just so bright and easy to see when you're backing up. And then coming in to the inside, um, off my very nice running boards here, 
um, you know, the truck is a little rough around the edges, but again, makes a perfect work pickup. I'm a fan of the white gauge cluster. I know that Dodge Ram was some of the first um, cars and trucks to ever do a white gauge cluster. I remember when they first come out, I fell in love with them then, and this is actually the first time I've ever driven one with that gauge cluster. So you have cruise control here on the steering wheel. It's super easy to use, but does I think it does work in this truck actually. Um, the Ford, my Ford F-150, my 2004 also has cruise control here on the steering wheel, which is a nice feature. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is nice. It's uh, set up very much like my F-150 with uh, headlights where you pull out to get the fog lights to come on. You have your dome, your cargo light here. And in the uh, center console, you have, of course, your heating and cooling, your climate controls. They're just uh, one climate control for the whole truck. Of course, it's single cab. And then I have this very nice um, aftermarket CD disc player. I'm not a big fan of the fact that this um, DVD CD player radio is a single DIN with a motorized double DIN screen that comes out. Um, I feel like the long term this motor might fail, but it actually has not let us down at all, not once. It's worked absolutely amazing the entire time, and the radio sounds really good. I think it is a dual. I think the brand is dual. So uh, if you are looking into getting a dual radio, it actually works really nice and is a super, super nice radio. has uh, a lot of features there as well for you to play with. I don't know who made the speakers on this truck, but audio-wise they are pretty clear. I feel like they're pretty standard definition, to be honest. Um, there's no fancy controls, just window, door, everything's power in here, including the seats, which is a nice feature. And uh, then, of course, here you have the classic Dodge cup holders that, uh, that have difficulty coming down in this truck and they're not the cleanest. I need to get them clean. Those work pretty well. I think the idea is that you can slide uh, these little sliders here to get a more accurate fit. You also have a, an ashtray that is very nice for storage and things. And then here in the center console you get that third row seat that flips up as well as storage here in the middle. And then in the middle of the seat here you have another lever down here that you can flip up for a secret hidden storage compartment which uh, which I absolutely love especially in a single cab truck like this now that would be nice to have in any truck like this and then to top it all off single cab life here Dodge actually puts a storage compartment behind the seats that is much bigger than most single cab trucks have or had and uh, there's plenty of room back there to store anything that you need and I think the spare jack that I don't have goes under the passenger seat so it's not taking up space back behind the seats here so Dodge gets a huge A plus when it comes to a single cab truck and lots and lots of storage. And that's the quick tour of the interior of my Dodge Ram 1500 and the exterior. Um, this truck is in rough shape, but that's perfect. I actually bought this truck hoping for it to be a work truck. Right now I'm here at home in Wyoming helping my dad lay fiber or fiber drops. We're laying fiber conduit in the ground from people's houses out to the road so that they can get hooked up with internet service and that means we have to tow a lot of conduit for the fiber. This truck I bought specifically to tow the real trailer that's not super heavy. It's something that a 1500 can handle, especially short term where we're just bouncing from people's houses and occasionally from town to town. Um, this truck I'm not impressed with its towing capabilities, but it hasn't let us down yet and it hasn't really been that much of a pain in the butt in towing that light trailer. Yes, the huge aftermarket tires are wonky and this truck is pretty beat up, but that's perfect for a work truck because I don't have to worry about beating up and scratching up my 2004 F-150 that now has 190,000 miles on it, but that is still in really nice shape. I can now beat up a work truck for 800 bucks, drive it around for a while, and then I hope to be able to flip this truck 
for more than I have into it. Right now I'm working on my dad's 1992 GMC Sierra to get it back up and running. And then we will finally have it as a spare work truck, or maybe this as the spare work truck, just in case something does break down. Now I understand that I can't pull a heavy trailer with this. It's not gonna be towing the mini excavator or a big trencher or anything like that around, but it works really, really well for the real trailer like we're using it for right now. And I'll throw a picture up of that so you guys can see. But um, that's pretty much why I bought this truck to use as a spare work truck, as a work truck so that I don't keep putting so many miles on and so that I don't keep having to tow a trailer and throw tools in and out of my nice pickup. And then of course I do hope to flip this and make a little bit of money and cash on the side and so that I have content to make for you guys while I'm here in Wyoming. Now I don't know how much longer we'll be here in Wyoming and I don't know if I'm going to be taking this truck to Idaho but I am going to have a lot more content coming out on this truck here very soon for you guys so stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram you know it's been out as a work truck so I haven't done hardly any work to it it's been over for like two and a half weeks pulling the real trailer ever since I got it running practically um, driving it over to level to where we were working about 40 miles 45 miles away uh, for the first time and taking it actually out on the highway was an absolute hoot and I also want to share that clip with you guys before we end today's video so go ahead and enjoy that and uh, then we're pretty much done with part two of the Dodge Ram 1500 build. This is the first time driving my new 2003 Dodge Ram 1500 uh, on a road trip or on the highway we're going 40 miles to level to work uh, Brooklyn is in the passenger seat. This was her idea. Uh, we do not legally own the truck. I have not titled it over. It has not been lien released from the previous owner. And in Wyoming, you're required to have a notarized bill of sale before you can drive it around the 45 days without getting plates. And uh, all I have is a signed over and notarized title and a bill of sale. So I think we'd be okay, but uh, I really do not want to find out either. And I don't want to find out either uh, why the truck is smoking so badly when, when I get on the throttle. But uh, so far, it's ran decent. It's loud. The tires are loud. They don't ride super well, and it doesn't drive very straight. But it drives a lot better than I thought it was going to and then I imagine and uh, yeah so oh, we'll see if we make it get pulled over thrown in jail or something like that I do have insurance though that's a plus I really haven't put that many miles on this truck but I still enjoy driving it around it is very very loud it's tall it's huge I've driven it off-road I've driven it on road so far there's nothing it can't handle Besides going the speed limit, it has still a difficult time getting and maintaining 6570. But uh, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Stay tuned here to the channel and to Instagram. Subscribe and follow for more content here on this truck. And follow me on IGTV at UIVO underscore auto to relive my 1999 Audi A8 Quattro build. With all of that said, stay tuned to the channel. I'll have part three of my Dodge Ram 1500 build for you guys next week. Until then, get out, enjoy your automotive ownership, and I'll catch you in the next one.